Hey visual arts students, I'm Mr. Thompson and today I'm here to discuss AP art with you. In this video I'm going to dissect the College Board guidelines and talk about how to make a fabulous AP portfolio. First off, what is AP art? Um, the College Board releases guidelines every year that arrive in the form of a bureaucratic informational packet. The language of the packet is designed to set a common standard for all visual arts students across the country, but it is dry, detailed, and a bit of a word salad. Uh, here's an example taken from the course packet. The AP Art and Design course framework presents an inquiry-based approach to learning about and making art and design. Students are expected to conduct an in-depth, sustained investigation of materials, processes, and ideas. The framework focuses on concepts and skills emphasized within college art and design foundations courses with the same intent, to help students become inquisitive, thoughtful artists and designers able to articulate information about their work. AP art and design students develop and apply skills of inquiry and investigation, practice, experimentation, revision, communication, and reflection. Okay, let's read between the lines here. The most important thing to know is that it's a sustained investigation, and that's the creation of a portfolio of artworks. Uh, there's a written component, but it's so small compared to the actual making of the artwork that it's almost nominal. The number of artworks in the portfolio may change at the discretion of the College Board, but typically it's 15 pieces total. A portfolio of artworks is a body of work. A body of work is a series of pieces that are created around a set of themes or a theme. Uh, professional artists sometimes work this way, but not always. Experienced artists know that from concept to execution, things will change in the development of just a single piece. So, as you can imagine, maintaining flexibility, curiosity, and an open mind will be extremely helpful to developing a body of multiple artworks. I often tell my students, don't put the cart before the horse. Uh, what I mean by this is lead by making, and don't get stuck within a rigid set of concepts or an idea that you think you should be making. Many ideas will surface rapidly uh, when you begin putting materials together. This isn't to say you shouldn't develop concepts. Uh, conceptual exploration and material exploration go hand in hand. Uh, there are concrete uh, and beneficial strategies for concept development, uh, but don't get locked into particular concepts. It's easy to get bogged down if you feel like your work doesn't illustrate your concepts. However, work that illustrates concepts is often one-dimensional and not very interesting. I, for one, would rather look at something that is inventive and inspired by a sense of mystery, wonder, and the unknown. Okay, part two. Consider your audience. Who's grading these things? Um, the College Board provides a detailed rubric for the assessment and grading of AP art portfolios. Let's take a look at it here. Uh, note again the attempt at systematizing something that can be so mercurial and subjective. I can almost certainly guarantee that they don't look at the rubric very often when they are scoring portfolios. The rubric is in their heads, and mainly they are looking for artworks that are impressive, inventive, dedicated, and exciting. Imagine that you were a teacher assigned to score the AP portfolios. You're at your computer, or perhaps in a conference room with other art educators, and you have 100 portfolios to score. Are you going to go through each one with a fine-tooth comb, applying the rubric to every single individual artwork? Uh, no, that would take thousands of hours and you have plenty of things you'd rather be doing. You're going to take a fast look at them and say, good, good, okay, mediocre, amazing, etc. Uh, grading art is inherently sub subjective. Um, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, no two teachers or college board professionals are going to score exactly the same. Part 3. How to make a fabulous AP art portfolio. Okay, I hate to break it to you, but there is no one-way, tried-and-true system for making a level 5, that's the highest score, AP portfolio. A level 5 portfolio will be one that truly impresses the judges. Uh, what kinds of things impress these anonymous people who work for the College Board? In my experience, they are sort of old-fashioned, unlike much of the contemporary art world, by the way, so they are mostly impressed by technical skill and figurative rendering. Uh, while there's no silver bullet for getting a 5 score, on your sustained investigation, I can almost guarantee that creating a portfolio of well-rendered figurative artworks will earn you a high score. Uh, they are generally hostile towards abstraction or work that appears clumsy, messy, jazzy, expressionistic, childlike, etc. I can imagine Picasso turning in a portfolio of his late abstracted figures and getting back a three score. I really can. Uh, let me emphasize it one more time. If you want to get a high score, then focus on technically skillful figuration. Here's a liberating thought. 
If you recognize that the grading system is highly subjective and biased towards skillful figuration, then your score shouldn't make that much of a difference to you. Art critics don't go into galleries and museums and go around putting numerical scores on the artworks on the wall, do they? I mean, that would be preposterous and offensive. Here's a story that I love to tell to put the scoring method into perspective. Uh, my good friend Pam was the head of the art department at Crossroads School in Santa Monica for many years. It's a fabulous department and they have been given many accolades and produced many accomplished artists. In her early years as a teacher, she had a student, let's call him Jed, who made sensitive and sophisticated Robert Ryman-esque abstract paintings. Uh, for a high school student to be making such work was almost unheard of. Jed worked hard all year and put together a rigorous portfolio of these abstracted artworks for his AP application. Well, when he got his score back, he got a two. A two, that's like the equivalent of a D. Um, he was devastated, and rightly so. Well, a few weeks later, he got a letter in the mail from CalArts, and guess what? Uh, they offered him a full scholarship. So it goes to show you, don't let the college board get you down if you don't make the type of art that they are looking for. It's a big world beyond these walls of your school, and there's room for many different uh, styles and voices and types of artists. Okay, so now if you're liberated from the notion that you have to impress the college board overlords, then how do you create a fabulous portfolio, body of work, sustained investigation? Here are some simple tips that I'd like to offer. Be brave. Be inventive. Go out of your comfort zone. Work hard. Build a practice of working every day. Experiment widely and then edit. Practice your skills and build new ones. Develop strong working habits. Be curious about other artists. Read about art and find artists that you like. Keep an open mind. Be okay with making mistakes. Learn how to turn your mistakes into ideas. Keep a journal and write about and reflect on your work as you go. Think about your audience. Find places to share your work. The internet works very well for this. Develop a strong community of other artists to work with and compete with. It's healthy competition, really. Help your peers. You will learn more about yourself by helping others develop. Give yourself deadlines and make sure you meet your deadlines. Enjoy the process. Truly enjoy it and savor it, for it is everything in the end. When artists are creating, there is life in the process of the work itself. When they stop working, that spirit, that vitality can go to sleep. Um, you will often hear artists complain about depression when they are going through a dry spell. That is because the vital spirit of creativity is asleep when they're not working or when they're between projects. Uh, some artists will quit altogether because the dueling forces of happiness and depression are amplified by the creative process and they just simply would like a more stable existence. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, although anyone who's ever undertaken an art practice will always have a lingering desire to be creative. Maybe those people can sublimate that creative drive into accounting, law, or being an influencer, who knows? Okay, part four, in summary, uh, the benefits of doing AP art. Okay, so after all this deconstruction and reading between the lines of the college board jargon, you might be asking yourself, why do the APs at all? It's a fair question, and I'll admit that there are times when the whole system irritates me so much I'd like to be done with it. However, there are benefits to subjecting yourself to this system. The main benefits, as I see them, are the structure and deadline the curriculum offers. Structure and deadlines are extremely helpful for artists. Uh, many artists end up working in a vacuum when they don't have a gallery show or a magazine wanting to publish their work. Um, working alone is really hard, and working in a vacuum is really hard. So uh, the opportunity to send your portfolio to reviewers who will look at it and consider it is an extraordinary privilege. Uh, take advantage of it. Don't let it take advantage of you. Know the rules so that you know how to break them. I hope you feel informed and liberated by my AP diatribe and that you will approach your art making with a newfound vigor, vitality, and freedom. All right, that's all for today. Mr. Thompson with HW Visual Arts signing off.